Hello there, welcome to Genesis Morals, my name is Mark Boardman and in this video we're going to be having a basic airbrushing tutorial and a nice series at that. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to start off um, this series with taking a look at the tools and equipment themselves and a bit of a buying guide um, because I know that um, I get so many questions asked when new people come into the hobby and buying an airbrush, buying a compressor is the first sort of milestone um, to sort of tech in this hobby that little bit further. So when it comes to um, buying airbrushes and compressors, um, there's a few things you need to look out for. Now let's start off with compressors. Now compressors can be quite um, confusing, it can get a little bit complicated, what to look for, what brands to look for, um, and in all honesty, um, you know, I've got to say the biggest thing, um, if you take away anything, is just to remember you can pretty much buy anything as long as you've got a tank, right? Make sure it has a tank every time. Don't go off on eBay and spend like a nice cheap £70 on a little compressor that has no tank because what's probably going to happen is um, it will overheat because basically when you press down the trigger to get air out of your airbrush um, the compressor is going to come on and every time you press that trigger the compressor comes on uh, pumps out air it's going to overheat the the rubbers and the seals are probably a little bit sort of cheaper so they're going to sort of overheat and um, and then it's going to lose compression and stop working uh, but if you've got a tank the um, compressor will fill up the tank with compressed air so then when you press down the trigger and get air hopefully as you can hear my compressor hasn't come on because you know it's all been filled up into the tank which then you know uh, limits the amount of time the compressors on which limits the amount of, of overheating basically now there are a couple of types of compressors you could go for if you wanted to uh, maybe to save yourself a bit of money there are um, these big industrial compressors that you could look at um, the cool thing about these things is one um, they are rather cheap. They are pretty big, um, and the big selling point for these is they've normally got something like, you know, a big 50 litre tank, right? So as much as they are big, loud, noisy, I've got one of them. Uh, it's got a warning on the side saying 97 decibels. You know, it turns on, it's really loud, it shakes the room, but after about two minutes, it's filled up a 50 litre uh, tank compressed with air, um, which the big selling point about that is, one, you could pay less than £100 to buy one. Um, I did notice um, at one point Aldi was selling them at only £50, um, which makes them rather, rather cheap. And um, when you've got that tank filled up with 50 litres, you could because these airbrushes, they're only sort of small, you know, um, 50 litres of compressed air. You could probably do all the airbrushing you need to do in a day. Um, and you've literally just had that on once for two minutes. So, you know, if you can get your head around, you know, the, the noise and the bulkiness of it, you know, maybe the price um, is, is for you. Um, and not only that, um, you may already have one, right? I mean, because you can use these um, sort of industrial compressors for all sorts of like DIY work. You may already have one as well. So you can use them. You just need to get the appropriate um, adapters to, because I mean, normally they come with these big thick hoses. So you need to sort of get some adapters to sort of adapt it down to these size hoses. But apart from that, you could be already good to go. Um, so that's one route but mainly you know in this hobby we want to go down the route of a proper hobby compressor um, just like any of these ones just here um, 
So when looking to buy a proper hobby one, you could buy all sorts of manufacturers out there. I do recommend Sparmax. They're a good uh, manufacturer. I've got a Sparmax. There is iWater, but they tend to be a bit more expensive. There is the Bambi, which are like really a, a really fantastic brand to get, but they're normally really expensive, normally very quiet as well, but very expensive. Um, the whole point again, a hobby one is they're more smaller and um, you know they're a lot, lot quieter. Now, as I say, the big buying guide is uh, make sure you could go around, search on eBay, online stores, that kind of thing. And really, if you can just make sure it's got a tank, you're pretty much going to have all your bases covered and you know prevent any overheating problems and that sort of thing so you definitely want to go for one of them you could buy one for ebay maybe about 80 pounds where you get like a nice little compressor with a, a tank and you're probably all good to go to start with now if you're um sort of maybe you're more already into it or you want to spend a little bit more money um as i said there's other things you can look for i.e you know there's those name brands that are kind of mentioned sparmax i really do recommend them they're normally sort of a good price and you know they're a pretty good brand at the same time um, but another feature you could be looking out for is like single and twin pistons. Um, what this basically is, um, the one I've got is a, a, a twin piston. And what happens is with a single piston, it's going to fill up, say, you, a standard would be maybe like a two and a half litre tank right um, but with a twin piston it's going to fill up this two and a half litre tank probably takes about the same amount of time just because it's twin piston doesn't mean it's gonna fill up a two and a half litre tank faster than a single piston they basically fill this tank up at the same amount of time but what's happening is with a twin piston um you know they're basically they can share the load right so it doesn't overheat as much it doesn't have to work as hard so basically it gives um, the compressor more of a durability and give it a longer lasting life um, the one I've got just on the table I've had that for about five years and it's as if um, the day I brought it so having um, twin pistons basically gives you that more durability if you want to look out for that as well as manufacturers like Sparmax or water bambi those kind kind of um, places um, and the one i brought was around about 200 pounds now once you've kind of sort of got your head around um buying a compressor the next thing you want to look at is sort of uh, i mean obviously we're going to be looking at regulators and airbrushes but how it is set up so here is my compressor just here. It's a nice twin compressor with a 2.5 litre tank on it. But the way you want to have this set up is to not have your hose um, going straight to your airbrush. What you want to do is if we follow this along, you'll see I've got a coil um, hose just here, um, which then works its way, if we just come around, works its way around to our regulator just here. Now the whole, re whole reason for a coil and this hose going to the regulator is what's going to happen is you've got to look out for things like condensation. Condensation will sort of build up in the tank, create moisture and it will get pushed up through this hose just here and then comes into the regulator. Um, now what's going to happen is because we've got a hose from the compressor to the regulator, as it as the air gets blown around here, the condensation can sort of uh, more likely sort of hit the sides of our hose, and then turn into water, and then it can just run back down into the tank. As well as once it gets up to the regulator, the regulator here is actually designed to trap moisture, uh, uh, and and then you can sort of have it come out just there then it will come out to my hose just here which then leads its way up to my airbrush just there so that's how you want your um, compressor all set up you don't want it to be how you might see some setups um, sort of as you buy them where it's you've got your compressor and the regulator is actually attached straight to the compressor. So basically you haven't got that coil um, hose being able to catch some of the moisture and let it drain back into the tank. Um, 
and all those kind of things because when you first start off if you haven't got a proper setup like that you'll probably notice that you'll start spluttering water out of your airbrush and that's just condensation um, building up and then pushing all the water up and it just spurts out the end of your airbrush so that's the kind of setup you want to have which then leads us to, I mean really when it comes to regulators as well by the way when you buy your compressor you'll probably get a compressor a regulator come with it if not i mean they're only maybe 10 20 pounds to buy and there isn't really any sort of um pacific brand to go out there and buy i mean you can pretty much buy any sort of standard one out there just do a bit of a search for them but as i say nine times out of ten they come with the compressor uh, which then brings us to um We'll, we'll start off with hoses. The next thing you might want to sort of look into is something called a quick release valve, right? This is where we can sort of, uh, basically this is like a quick release valve. They can cost maybe 10, 20 pounds depending on where you go and whatnot. Um, and then there's a second part to it that hooks onto your airbrush. And basically, if you have this second part that hooks onto the airbrush, you can very quickly just click in and click out um, and and change airbrushes from hose to hose as, as much as as much as you like depending on what airbrush you want because some airbrushes are better for some tasks than others then we come to airbrushes um there's a lot of different airbrushes out there to start off with um, we have um, things like single action and dual action single action we just have one here is where plain and simply you press down the trigger and you get air all right and you also get paint basically you've got this sort of um, little needle screw just at the end here which basically moves the needle up and down slightly and then it's just locked in that one position you press down for air and it sprays the paint out whereas with a dual action you press down for air and then you pull back the needle backwards forwards as far back as you like and you can sort of get the kind of spray pattern you want and you've got more control so um, when it comes to buying an airbrush you can buy a single action which are normally a cheaper airbrush because there's less parts involved um, but it's not as good as a dual action because you've got all the control with a dual action. Um, really, single action airbrushes, um, they are maybe good for a beginner because it's going off and buying a cheaper airbrush. And um, they're normally good for natural metal finishes, but that's sort of going a bit more intermediate and advanced. Um, so really, you want to get a dual action airbrush. And then um, we've got different sort of types of dual actions. We've also got, um, we've got a siphon feed, which is um, where the colour cup is on the top. Um, and basically gravity um, pulls the um, paint down into the needle end and blasts it out the other. You've also got side feeds, which was sort of similar, and there's like a side um, colour cup, and then you've got like a suction feed, which is normally like there's one on the underside. But in the scale modelling, really, um, most people go off and get a siphon feed just like this. Um, you've got all sorts of different makes that you could probably um, go for here. Um, and also you can get different sizes. Um, you know, it can get a little bit uh, confusing upon what to get. Um, now there's good makes out there. Um, there's Iwata. Uh, there's Harder and Sternbeck, they're a good make. You've got Badger, they're a good make. Um, Porsche, they're also a good one. Um, but they can be quite expensive. I mean, really to get a half decent paintbrush, a hundred pounds upwards is kind of what you want to be paying. I mean, if you could pay a hundred pounds upwards, you're gonna have an half decent airbrush. And these things are normally bulletproof, these um, airbrushes, you buy one of these, and you literally have it for life. I mean, I had this about six years ago, this Evolution 2-in-1, you know, and it's still good and going to today. You know, they are pretty damn solid. Uh, so once you've bought one, it is a lifetime time investment. However, again, you know, if you're just getting into the hobby, you may be wanting to look for something a little bit more cheaper, which 
Um, we have a Vida here, which is, it is, uh, I did go off a couple of years ago and I did do a whole bunch of research on um, cheap airbrushes and just seeing, you know, can you get away and buy a cheap airbrush? Well, these Vida airbrushes, um, you know, they're, they're quite popular on e um, eBay. They only cost around about 20 pounds. So they are really nice and cheap for a new beginner to actually go off and get into this hobby. Um, now, yes, they aren't as good as your top name brands that we've got over here, over a hundred pounds, but I have, um, I've had this for quite a few years. I've used it a fair few times and it's still good and going, even though maybe the rubber seals and everything around all the seals may not be as the best quality and they're not like Taflon seals and stuff. Um, but in all honesty, they're still good and going and live and kicking. Um, it is a recommended beginner airbrush. I mean, if you're going to use it solid for a long time, you know, eventually, you know, these seals are probably going to go. It's probably going to wear a bit, maybe not as accurate. But as I say, for a beginner to get into the get into the game, you know, it's a highly recommended airbrush. Or even for somebody who has a good quality airbrush but wants a second airbrush and doesn't want to spend a load of money, you know, this is a good airbrush to just throw in there as a second, as a second airbrush. Right. Then you also have things like um, the different size needles, because um, when you look at the airbrushes, you'll see um, things like you know um, different size cups. You know which size cups to get, different size needles. For instance, um, my preferred brand would be um, the Harder and Sternbeck, the Evolution range. You know, this is an Evolution. Um, we've got a nice big color cup on here, which is really good for any sort of general sort of spraying. And it's got a 0 0.4 needle in there. Now, a 0 0.4 needle is good enough to do some nice general spraying, like spraying any sort of hole models, um, and even getting in there and doing some fine work like pre-shading, post-shading, bleaching, those kind of techniques. So it really is a, you know, trick of all trades, kind of airbrush sort of setup. Uh, however, you know, I mean, for a beginner, you probably won't want to go out and get one of these Infinity airbrushes, but for someone who's going intermediate to advanced, uh, going off and getting an Infinity is you know, it's pretty good recommend. It's quite an expensive airbrush. This is maybe about 200 pounds. Um, but you've got a 0 0.15 needle in there. So the needles really come down really small. It's really good for getting in there and doing some really sort of fine, fine work. And as you can see, it's got a smaller color cup because when you're doing fine work, you don't need a lot of paint. So a small color cup does it just fine. And the smaller the color cup, the more you can sort of get into harder to reach places. Um, another thing is, the reason why I like um, Evolu uh, Harder and Sternbeck is because you'll notice that we can unscrew our um, color cups and put in different size color cups, which I do find is, a, is it is a great benefit when sort of um, coming around to doing things. Whereas, um, you know, sadly, I water, they are, it, it is just, the color cup is just welded into place. So um, if you wanted different color cup sizes, you have to go off and buy a second airbrush that's got a smaller color cup size which does kind of put me off um, in all honesty, which is why I would re recommend um, Harder and Sternbeck. Um, so we've now gone over um, all the different sort of airbrushes, compressors, um, you know, I would sort of, if you really sort of just want to try this hobby out and don't want to spend a load of money, go to eBay, buy a compressor for about 80 pounds with a tank and go off and spend maybe 20 pounds on a Vida airbrush, um, just to sort of get you going in the hobby and then maybe later on down the line go for something like a nice decent maybe 100 pound airbrush whether it's an iwata badger even um, uh, uh, um harder and sternbeck or anything like that so hopefully you know that's gives you sort of a nice bit of a buying guide and a look into all the different airbrushes um so what we're going to do now is we're going to start moving along with showing you some basic airbrushing and so that is the end of our uh, the first part of our basic um, airbrushing tutorial. Um, what we're going to look at in the second part is actually using the airbrush for the first time. So hopefully you've enjoyed this first part of basic airbrushing here at Genesis Models. So until next time, my name is Bobby Waldron and I hope you've enjoyed.